Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. I'm Ian. Today we're talking about our top three albums of all time. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you go check them out. There's links for The Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music playlist that we put together every week, and the Patreon page. Make sure you go check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyyed the episode, make sure you give us the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time we release new episodes. So for me, I'm sure it was for you also, this is kind of a difficult topic because top three is really, really, really hard for me to come up with. It's more of like a top ten that, you know, I think my top two always stay the same. Mine do too, really. But, for, but that number three spot really could have been one of seven different albums for me. It really kind of depends on kind of my mood at the time. So I'd say like our top three as of today, maybe that's a, a better way to phrase it. Right. But, uh, you know, I, I, all the albums I have, I, I absolutely love. Actually, you've got some, some pretty good ones also. But, uh, like I said, this is something that could probably change tomorrow. And number three for me is an album that uh, I, I really love this band's first album. And I didn't really know what to expect the first time I listened to this album. And I, I think it's probably, in my opinion, the greatest sophomore album in music history. At least off the top of my head. I can't think of anything. I would say it's close, but I have one that I think is better. Okay. But, yeah. it's, a, it's a great album, though, and that is Versus by Pearl Jam. This is an album, like I said, I loved 10 when it first came out. Uh, you know, Of course, I think it was Nirvana that got me into grunge. And then when 10 came out and I first started listening to 10, it was like a different kind of grunge. It was yeah, it's, a different, it's not it, quite grunge. It's, there's a different kind of musicality, I think. Mm -hmm that Pearl Jam had that Nirvana didn't. And w so when Versus came out and the, I, I think the like overall content, the lyrical content on here, you know, uh, Eddie Vedder sings about things that in 2023 are just as relevant. Mm -hmm. um, things like uh, child abuse, sexual assault, things like that, that, or gun violence. Something that we still see every day. You know, themes that, you know, 20 years later, or like I said, are 30 still very, years. 30 years yeah. later, yeah, are still very relevant. And it's an album that, for me, it's a 10 out of 10 album. There's not a skippable track on here. I agree with that. And I'd say some of the deeper cuts on this album are probably, in my opinion, some of the best tracks on this album. So my number three is, uh, it's a, a, a first, it's like a, it's a solo album by Ben Folds. Uh, it's the first solo album he did. Uh, Songs for Silverman. I love this album, and I was telling Nick before we started recording, I, I would think that, in my opinion, this might be my favorite album of the aughts, um, between 2000 and 2010. Uh, and I came to it late. I This came out in 2005. I didn't even listen to it until 2008. But it hit me so well. Like It was like, I heard it, and I was like, why haven't I not heard this before? Yeah. And ever since then, so we're talking 15 years, uh, this has been in my rotation of top albums. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's some of his best work. Some might say it's not it's not true, but it's just my opinion. It's my favorite of his albums, and that includes the Ben Folds 5. Yeah, albums. I've always been a little bit bigger of a fan of the Ben Folds 5 stuff. But, uh, you know, w w with Songs for Silverman, I, I don't think I've listened to it. I listened to it when it came out. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've really listened to it since. You should you should give it another go because because this is his first solo album. There's still a lot of that Ben Folds Five feel to it. Yeah, but it's more personal. There's a bit more person okay. personalness to it, um, and a little less of the humor that is present with Ben Folds Five. Yeah, um, which he does incorporate in some of his later solo albums as well. But um, so this is like Ben Folds Five being slightly serious. Gotcha. And like I said, this is for me. This is a, t a ten out of ten album. There's not a skippable song on the album, and yeah, Ben folds. So my number two album has been one of my favorite albums since I was a kid, and it's a a masterpiece of an album. And I think a, a lot of people I think out there would agree. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's an album that uh, had very strong social significance when it when it was released. Uh, and it's just a, like I said, just an absolutely classic, classic album. And that's uh, What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. It's uh, it, This is the uh, 50th anniversary edition 
came out. I think it was last year that this came out. But yeah, I think so too. You know, it, it's like I said when this was released. There's so many things going on in this country in the early uh, '70s. They're still going on. Today. They're still it's going on today. Just... And but in, in in the early '70s, outside of the R and B community, it wasn't really being incorporated in music. No, that was kind of when things were getting a little bit less socially driven i think yeah disco was kind of coming into its own and the the songwriter side of things was kind of just being pushed back a little bit and but that's very present here yeah you know? yeah stevie wonder is another one who's kind of on that same level absolutely but, you know the rest of it was just kind of going to disco yeah but uh you know we there were so many there was music was very heavily social like social activism in the late part of the 60s mm-hmm. That I think there was kind of like a, everyone was kind of burned out on a lot yeah. of that by the early part of the 70s. But what, like I said, with what Marvin Gaye did on this album, it was something that uh, was almost kind of revolutionary, especially in like white America at that mm-hmm. time. And that, uh, like I said, it's an album that I absolutely love. If it wasn't for my love of my number one album, this would definitely be number one for me. So my number two, like you, the one and two are going to not really change too much. And this is going to come as no surprise to anybody. Uh, but it's kind of Crow's August and everything after. Which is an album that is, I have definitely in my top ten. Yeah. it's. I think we kind of agree a lot of our top tens are somewhat interchangeable. Pro, well. I would say 50%. <laughs> of the albums that we'd have in our top ten? Yeah. Probably not. But okay. You don't think so? <laughs> no. I mean, after, after we're, we're done recording, we can talk about Okay. That. Um, maybe we'll have another episode about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that being said, so... August and everything after we've talked about it a billion times on this uh, on the channel. I if I had to be honest, I, I mean I thought about I was like well, we've talked about this before. What more can be said? But I had to be honest. It's my it's my second favorite yeah, album of the, all time. The thing I, well, I yeah. the thing I want to say about this album is Mr. Jones is so overplayed, mm-hmm. but it's nowhere near being the best song on this Go, album. God, no. I mean it's the song that kind of got us to it got me to buy the album. Yeah. In 1993, but I have quickly found that it was, like you said, not the best song on the album. No, um, but it's still. This is another 10 out of 10. There's no, there's no song that I ever skip. If I start this album, I am listening to this album. Yeah, all I don't the way think. Through. I don't think there's one on here that I skip either. Yeah, there, there. I mean, there shouldn't be. Every song on there is fantastic. Yeah, it's a great album. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, <laughs> my number one is gonna be. Uh, no doubt, you know it's uh, no doubt. <laughs> well, I mean, like <laughs> Tragic Kingdom, by no doubt. <laughs> there, there's no doubt is what my number one album is. It's an album I've loved for a long time. It's an album I talk about quite a bit on this channel, I think. But uh, I've got a bunch of copy, a bunch of copies of it. This guy likes to harass me about it. My wife likes to harass me about it. I guess I probably don't need ten copies of it, but it's a great album. But it is Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. I actually have the 50th anniversary box set right above Ian. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's an album that, growing up, I mean, I grew up with this album. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my dad loved this album growing up. I listened to his copy of it on vinyl when I was a kid. And it uh, I kind of lost track of it there for probably... 20 years, maybe. Uh, probably about 15 years. I'd yeah. say by, like, by the mid-90s, I got heavily into punk, into ska. Mm-hmm. And it probably wasn't until, like... 2008, 2009, 2010, when I started getting back into Pink Floyd. And the first time I listened to this again, you know, uh, the, when I, when from I started. From an adult perspective. Yeah, from an adult perspective. You know, I remembered why I love this album so much. The production is unbelievable on this album. There's, uh, I, I know, like, Ian, and there's a lot of other people that some of the tracks on here get kind of repetitive. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of also the beauty of this. Album. I, let, let me say though, as that's true, and I you know I have said that, but it works for this album. It does, in my opinion, because I'm not a huge Pink Floyd. I like Pink Floyd, but I have a, I I feel that a lot of their songs can get a little repetitive. But all of that being said, this this album everything is just yeah. works. Yeah, for it does. This album. It does. Just a great album. I will say that Ian was also laughing that I have to label which copy. I, I have because, like I said, I've got ten copies of it. So just looking at them, they all look the same almost, but they're not all the same copy. But so my number one again, I think we should really call this episode predictability. Yeah. Um, <laughs> probably, 
because no, no one's going to be surprised by this one. I think I've even said this before. It's and guess what, Ian? I've got multiple copies of this album yeah. also. I don't. I well, I, I guess I do. I have, I have the this this edition, "Thick as a Brick" by Jethro Tull. Um, and that's, then the, I, that's the Steve Wilson, the Steve Wilson remix from uh, 2012. I have this edition. I have the ninth, the original pressing from '72 on Reprise Records. And I have it on CD. So yeah. I guess I've got three copies of this as well. But um, I've got the 50th, 50th, the 50th anniversary, anniversary also. Right. Um, so, yeah, again, it's not something I haven't talked about a million times before. But if I could only listen to one album for the rest of my life, I would have to pick this one. Would you say that there's not a skippable track on this album yet? <laughs> I would say that. In fact... Um, if you the, don't know, it's all one song. It's so. basically one song, split over two sides. Yeah. Um, yes. And that again, that being said, the song, it, it is one song, but it does play in parts. And if you uh, listen to it on CD, the, the remix, it, it is broken it up is into broken tracks. Up. So there, you know, it is somewhat more accessible to, today, to today's modern... Um, tastes in terms of listening to music. Well, it makes it easier to stream that it, way. Exactly. When it's it, broken right. up. And, that's, and that was why it was done. I will say that with this album, it's some of the more ingenious packaging that I've seen mm. in music. And I actually talked about I did a video all about it uh, yeah. not too long ago. Because it's really cool because it, it, the not this version of it, but the original version of it and the 50th anniversary copy I have has a full fold out uh, uh, newspaper with all these sorts of really interesting articles, and there's like cross, all written by the cr- band, crossword yeah. puzzles and stuff in there. It's really kind of a cool presentation that they did for the album, but it is a great album. Well, that's all we got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. This could have been so many different albums that we could have put in our top three, but we want, we want to know what you guys think. Make sure you drop us a comment down below. Let us know what your top three albums of all time are. It's, uh, it's something I'm really interested in checking out. But uh, if you guys enjoyed the episode, make sure you give us a little thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. That's all we got. Until next time. Talk to y'all later. Keep on spinning. Peace. <laughs>